Our reporter Rashad Khan has been following the developments of the COVID-19. So all of the measures that were taken by the government of Trinidad and Tobago to extend from April 15th, the restrictions and the stay-at-home orders has now been pushed back to April 30th, as you, as you would have found out a little bit earlier this month. What is the potential of the April 30th deadline now being pushed into May. Around the world, we've seen countries going into May 3rd, mid-May in France. France has now pushed back to May 15th. Does that possibility exist here in Trinidad and Tobago? Rashad Khan has this story. The country is two weeks away from the deadline of the stay-at-home measures implemented to reduce the spread of COVID-19. And according to the public health regulations, the order is in effect until April 30th. But now that the country is halfway through, we asked the health minister if government saw any possibility of it being extended. It is way too early to do that. However, Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley says hopefully by next week, they would be able to assess the virus's development over April. Well before the 30th, but not as early as now. We will evaluate the national profile, the national response, and the professional assessment of the state of the infection in the country. And that will determine what decision we make as to what new deadlines and dates we put beyond the 30th. Dr. Rowley says they remain cognizant of expert advice that the relaxing of measures too soon could lead to a resurgence of the virus. But in the meantime, he says a committee was set up to begin working on a plan for the country's recovery from the effects of the pandemic. He hopes a draft of that roadmap to recovery could be completed at the earliest in two weeks. However, he notes it would depend on their assessment of the national response. I'm hoping that by the end of this month, we should have a rough draft and we work into the month of May. And if we are saying that we would not be out of this danger zone, until, say, May, June, I would give ourselves until the end of May. Dr. Rowley indicated that he would chair the committee, which includes two other members of cabinet, Robert LaHunt and Alison West. Also on the committee are former finance ministers Wendell Motley and Winston Dukaran. Joining them would also be some prominent figures in the private sector. Richard Khan, CNC3 News. Thank you very much for your reporting and your continued reporting on this story, Rashad Khan. No matter which direction you go, no matter which angle you look at this from post-pandemic, the most important part of this is jobs. The most important part of this is the economy and getting businesses up and running again. I want to welcome to the show via phone Dr. Roger Hussein, who's an economist. Uh, Dr. Roger Hussein, good morning and thank you very much for taking our call this morning. No problem. Good morning to you, and it's a pleasure to be here. All right. So what have you made of this 22-person team that has been assembled to lead this country into the post-pandemic era? I didn't get your question correctly. You asked, what is my... What do you make of the team, the, the, the composition of the team? I have no problem with the composition of the team, except perhaps that there could have uh, probably been a few more women. But this is the choice of the Prime Minister. He would probably have his due reason, and I wish the team the best. It's a very important undertaking. They have at hand the matter of not just restarting the Trinidad Tobago economy, but also implementing policies that could get the Trinidad Tobago economy back on a good path, because this country has been in a, in a depression since 2016. And it's important that what policy measures we put in place uh, get the engine of economic activity back into positive numbers. So I wish the, the team selected by the Prime Minister all the best. The balance of businessmen, businesswomen, bankers, energy experts, the labor movement, economists, former Minister of Finance, is the balance right on this team? I don't know. I, I, I am not sure I am able to comment, to, to comment on, on, on the balance exactly. Um, I mean, if you were to ask me off the top of my head, I would say that someone from agriculture should be there. Um, mm -hmm. But no doubt they would have sat down, sat down and pontificated on who they would like and what they would like to see a recovery look like, and then pick people according to what aspects of the economy they would like to see restarted and when. So I think due diligence would have been done. We have to give them the chance. The, my only concern is that we don't end up with a situation where 
we recover in from from 2020 into 2021 but that the economy as a whole does not go back into a growth mode and remains locked into the cycle of activity of 2016 to 2019. I think people have to remember that 2016 to 2019 was one of a depression in Trinidad and Tobago. And what we are trying to do is not only restart the economy uh, from, from the closure associated with COVID, but we want to restart the economy back into positive growth, which is before 2016. So that's two different things I'm saying there. Dr. Hussein, this is really uncharted territory for this country. Uh, how difficult is it for us to even know where to start? This is an enormous undertaking and the team should be encouraged and strongly supported. I say that because for all of our efforts since 2008, uh, 2009 in particular, this economy has not really grown. Since 2009, our average annual growth rate was about minus 0.05%. It was very small. And now this team is being configured, and I keep repeating, not just to get us restarted from the COVID closure, but also this team has to be responsible, I hope, for getting the economy back on a growth path altogether, on which we have been doing a very bad job. To restart the economy will take a lot of thought. To get economic growth going will be even more difficult. And the, although this is a set team, I am sure they will have to do wide consultation with technical people in many different areas so that the time period they have is very limited and I wish them the best. They will have to work very, very hard. I I'm glad that you mentioned what is an extremely key point. They may have to do some uh, talking to different people in different sectors of our society. Another political analyst, Vishnu Raghunath, made the point that he would have probably liked to see uh, someone young, someone of the future generation on this committee. Do you share that view uh, that someone, because when you look at the names and you, you look at the people, they are the part of the foundation blocks of this country. Uh, would you have liked to see seen somebody uh, of the future foundation of Trinidad and Tobago? Of course, I, I mean, again, I, I, I see nothing wrong with the composition being on an average 20 years younger. Uh, at least two to, 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 to three members. Um, but, but the Prime Minister and whoever picked the team would have probably had have a number of reasons and a number of criteria. I would have liked to see a couple more people from the opposition so that there would have been a wider degree of buy-in from the public in support of the team. But it is what it is, and we have to support them. But you see, it, it was a good opportunity to have an almost co-chair co relationship because we are in a crisis. We are in a crisis since 2016. This economy has contracted about 14%. So in other words, if in 2015 this economy had $1, at the end of 2020, the economy would only have about 80, 86 cents. And that's something, that's a big difference. And, and to manage that, you need uh, nimble people, you need very intelligent people, very knowledgeable people. The team certainly has that. And as I said, for the areas that they are not covered, they would need to call in and have consultations. I, the time period is very short, so they would have to design a formula in order to get it done. Yeah, you mentioned that, that, that formula and that time period. The, the Prime Minister is expecting at least a draft economic plan uh, by April 30th. Um, what do you foresee the next couple of weeks looking like for the likes of former ministers of finance, Wendell Motley and Winston Dukaran? <clears throat> well, it would involve uh, a lot of conversations with each other and a lot of thinking ahead. Um, some of the guys there, they are very experienced in, in terms of understanding the structure of the Trinidad and Tobago economy so that they would have a good uh, idea of how to move forward. So. All we, sh all we can do and what we have to do at this point is to support them. I, as I said, I think a good opportunity was missed in making the, 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 the team a little wider and a little more all-encompassing uh, by not including two members of the opposition, for example, 
but it is what it is and we should now support them moving forward. Yeah, I just also want to dive a little bit deeper into that point that you've been making because you're not the only one who thinks that there should have been a little bit more bipartisan support on this uh, committee. Um, how, how slanted should the opposition feel that none of its members are on this uh, committee? I, I won't know. Um, you should probably ask the minister, the, the, the leader of the opposition that. I am just talking as an academic and someone who wants to see my country move forward and who would therefore think that the plan would benefit from the widest cross-section of ideas. Using some of the same people over and over may not be the best idea moving forward, but again, they probably have their, their reasons. But I have seen some of the same members of this team um, been around for the last 20, 30 years and where is the economy now? The economy is not necessarily in a good position. So I would have thought that maybe they would have used two members of the opposition, two strong members, so they could get buy-in from a wider cross-section of the population, because this plan needs to be from the people, of the people, and for the people. Um, I could be wrong. They, it, it, there could be another agenda in mind. But I think if you do it more all-encompassing and support the people, and get the support of the people that that will help it work when it's time to action item it. Dr. Hussein, I just want to dig into your economic expertise. This is a huge, huge uh, decision, and it's also a very difficult decision. And it's a conversation that is not just gripping Trinidad and Tobago, but it's even more of a big conversation across in the United States and the wider world. When and how to reopen the economy? Um, how difficult a decision is this, and what is the right time uh, to do that? I think, I think this is the most important question you have asked me so far. And on this particular question, the health of the Chan Tobago nationals matter. And so the Prime Minister has to take that into consideration, and he has. He has been involved in the process from day one. And we should only open this economy when we are at a point that the probability of a new wave is lowest and that we have brought this particular uh, episode under full and meaningful control. I estimate that could probably be sometime in June. I, I, I am not the person to make the call. I'm just giving you my opinion. Mm -hmm. But the rest of the world also matters, and we see that in Jamaica, for example, I think they had about 60 cases in the last three days. And that would have ripple effects throughout the Caribbean. And then the world remains in a state of, of, of turmoil because of this pandemic. The USA is still largely being hit very badly, as is Europe. So that even if the Tobago economy were to, to open up, say, by the end of May, and we were to open our borders, we could still be, we would have to be very careful that an infected person does not enter our shore and start a new cycle of contamination. And also, it would affect our economy in the form of demand for tourism and demand for the goods that we sell abroad. The price of oil and gas and our energy products would likely remain dormant for most of this year. All right, Dr. Roger Hussein, thank you very much for your insight into this very important topic. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Dr. Roger Hussein, economist, walking us through the 22 that has been organized to help steer this country into what will be a post-pandemic era. It's going to be in a very important next few months for the likes of Wendell Motley and Winston Dukaran and the other 19 that have been submitted to uh, the prime, who have, who have submitted themselves to this country in guiding this country into the post-pandemic era. We're going to take a quick break here on The Morning Brew. When we come back, we'll tell you how you can keep in touch with us, how you can let us know what you think of the 22 members that have been selected to help Trinidad and Tobago's economy, Trinidad and Tobago's society at large, to recover from this coronavirus pandemic. Stick around.